and I've come to talk to you about your soul. Those are the words of George Whitfield, the greatest preacher since the Apostle Paul. And George Whitfield would travel throughout the early American colonies on horseback from town to town, speaking sometimes in 10, 20, 30,000 people. And he would tell them, I've come to talk to you about your soul. I've got good news today and I've got bad news. In the same way as if I went to my doctor and he said, James, take these pills. I'd look at him and say, you're crazy. I'm not sick. Now I go to that same doctor and he goes, James, sit down. We've done five tests, x-rays, MRIs, blood tests. You have a serious condition. You have a cancer. You're going to die in two weeks. And Whitfield was quoting the Lord Jesus Christ. Where Jesus told a very religious man, you must be born again. It's not enough to be a good person. It's not enough to be a studier of the law, a teacher of the law. In his day, he would have been considered a very godly man. And Jesus told him, it's not enough. You need a transformation within the heart that Jesus called being born again. Same way, I've got to give you bad news. You see, God is holy. And you may say, that's not bad news. It is bad news. Because God is three times holy. It says He is light, and in Him there is no shadow or darkness. Nothing unholy or impure can be in His presence. So how is it that mankind in our wicked state can be reconciled to a God that holy? How is it? See, we've all lied. We've all stolen. We've all looked with lust. Have you murdered? Well, you might say, no, I haven't killed anybody. I'm a good guy. Jesus took it even further and said, if you hate your brother, if you desire ill on another person, if you're angry with a person, you've committed murder in your heart already. And folks, it wasn't just the nails that held him there. It wasn't the, the nails in his feet and his arms and the beatings and the crown of thorns, but his love for his people. And while he hung on the cross, there was another wrath that was poured out from the Father. He experienced the wrath of the religious leaders and the Gentiles and all those that are around him by spitting on him and mocking him and ridiculing him. But then he received the wrath of the Father. Why is that? Because he was a substitute. He would be the one responsible for my sins and he would pay the debt on the cross. And then when it was completed, he would cry out, it is finished. I've paid the debt. My people can be forgiven. And he died and he was sat in a tomb for three days. You see, Muhammad's still in the tomb. Krishna, Joseph Smith, all these great men, they're still in the grave. Jesus rose from the dead. He appeared to us, all his disciples 500 at one time. He's risen from the dead. We have a living Savior, Jesus Christ. And he lived the perfect life you and I can't live. You see, his perfect obedience can be given to you. And on the cross, it says in Isaiah that it pleased the Father to crush his own son. That means that God the Father punished his own son as if he was you, as if he was me. And then three days later, he rose from the dead. God the Father signed that his payment was, was accepted, that God's wrath was satisfied. We need a substitute. We need somebody who can take our place on that cross. And I put my faith in this Jesus, and it comes from the heart. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not a head knowledge only. Much deeper than that, from the heart. It's the work of God moving in the heart that grants us a repentant faith. It's always a repentant faith. I sense the weight of my sins, a remorse, a regret, and turning to Christ. And now He's not only my Savior, but like my Lord. I'm adopted to His family. I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God, I'm forgiven. And now I live to please Him and to honor Him and to glorify Him. And one day to be in His very presence. Continually wicked, so we need a substitute. We need somebody who can take our place on that cross. And that person is Jesus Christ. It's by faith alone, in Christ alone, by grace alone. Grace is an unmerited favor. That's God giving grace to a man that up before hated Him a man that didn't love him. You see, we are at war with God, but he has provided a means by which we can be made right with him. That is a true love story, that the God of the universe who created us would condescend, come to this earth, 
and bear the punishment that we deserve 